can be seated. Oh, yeah, please do. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jason Belk, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Dean of Students uh, here at GW Law School and welcoming you to the 2024 Academic Awards Celebration. Today is a wonderful day in the life of GW uh, Law because we'll be pre presenting awards to some of, our, uh, some of our finest students in recognition of their hard work and dedication during their time here at the law school. This celebration is being recorded, uh, so for all participants, we ask that you go ahead and silence your cell phones. Uh, um, and if there's a call that you have to take or a baby that you have to soothe, um, we ask that you take, uh, do both of those things outside and using the side entrance. Um, in today's program, uh, deans will be re reading the accomplishments and the names of each winning student from the podium. But what's exciting about this is the students don't know what awards they're getting. I think you probably know you're getting an award, um, but you don't know exactly which one it is. And so. Uh, I don't know, I'm excited about that. Uh, so students, when your name is called, uh, we ask that you come forward and receive your award uh, and stand at the center stage to take a picture with Dean Matthew. On the back of your program, there's a QR code on the back of your program, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna um, post the actual awards after the, uh, the ceremony is over, uh, and so you can send that to your friends and to your family members who weren't able to come. Um, it'll be on the Academic Awards website and that website will be up and revealing all of our winners at that time. This event is also being live streamed and recorded, so you can share the link of the digital recording with your friends and family after the ceremony who weren't able to attend or who were able to attend and want to watch it again. Uh, so with that, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Dana Bowen Matthews, the Harold H. Green Professor of Law and Dean of George Washington University School of Law. Dean Matthew joined the law school in August 2020 and is the first woman to lead uh, the law school as dean in the school's 159-year history. Uh, she previously served on the faculty at the University of Virginia uh, School of Law and University of Colorado School of Law, where she held a number of, of, of uh, significant positions in the policy world. Since joining GW Law three and a half years ago, Dean Matthew has, has overseen transformative regrowth here at the, in the law faculty and has overseen the establishment of nine new legal clinics in her time, a new health law and policy program, and our new Center for Law and Technology. Dean Matthew is also the founder and served as the inaugural faculty director of GW's newly chartered Equity Institute, an interdisciplinary research hub uh, dedicated to addressing racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic injustice in the United States and globally. A leader in public health and civil rights law, Dean Matthew is the author of the best-selling book, Just Medicine, A Cure for Racial Inequality in American Healthcare, and the recently released Just Health, Treating Structural Racism to Heal America. She is also the co-author of, of a case book on health policy, on public health law, rather, ethics and policy. A visionary, energetic, and strategic leader. We are so fortunate to have her at the helm of the law school. If you could please welcome Dean Matthew. Dean. So how many of you have your parents there, here? I wish I had my parents here to hear all of that. <laughs> that was so cool. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon. We'll be presenting 42 awards today. 55 students will receive them, and they will receive them from five accomplished and multiple categories. Some of you will receive more than one award. I just wanna pause and say that this is the award ceremony that really gives credence to the mission statement of this law school. Our faculty has defined the mission and vision of the George Washington University Law School is a global law school that exists to have impact on the law and on the world. Through students like you who receive a DC-infused education and are equipped to solve the most pressing challenges of our time. We need you to do just that. And so it gives me great honor to announce that there will be awards divided into five categories. The first, excellence in clinical practice. The second, distinguished accomplishment. The third, excellence in a general field of study. The fourth, excellence in oral advocacy. And the fifth, overall academic excellence. 
These categories represent a great breadth of accomplishment, everything from outstanding performance in specific courses, to clinical dedication, to victories in advocacy competitions, and to overall academic performance. A wide range of our very best students are represented, and we are simply delighted to honor them all. The faculty has the utmost respect for the award recipients and their accomplishments. We want to say thank you to mothers, fathers, spouses, sisters, brothers, family, and friends who have all supported the winners over the years. We also express our gratitude to the benefactors who have endowed many of these awards, and we congratulate and extend our best wishes to each of the graduates. It is now my pleasure to introduce Alberto Benitez, Professor of Clinical Law and Director of the Immigration Clinic, Professor Benitez. Thank you, Dean Matthew. Good afternoon, buenas tardes. The Manuel and Ana Maria Benitez Award for Clinical Excellence in Immigration Law is given to a member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has demonstrated extraordinary ability in his or her work in the immigration clinic and who possesses the personal qualities of Manuel and Ana Maria Benitez, my parents, both immigrants to the United States from Mexico. And these qualities include initiative, creativity, zeal, loyalty, and integrity. The greatest lesson I've garnered this semester transcends mere skill acquisition. It's the realization that coupling legal acumen with compassion and empathy defines our true efficacy as lawyers and makes us different. This year's Benitez Award winner wrote that in her end of semester reflection paper, which is fitting because compassion and empathy guides everything that she does. This year's winner was the colleague that would show up at your moot or your event to support you, despite her other obligations. This year's winner would volunteer to take on any task, big or small, because she wanted to help out. This year's winner approached every task with a smile and positive attitude. She also does right by her Puerto Rican roots, because she makes excellent maduros, which I hope she brought with her today, which she generously shared with her colleagues. Throughout her time at the clinic, this student attorney tackled several different projects. She pushed past her initial inclination to use legalese and clearly explained the asylum system and immigration court best practices to a group of parents from a local school during a Know Your Rights presentation. Along with two of her colleagues, she organized a documentary screening about an asylum seeker, where she also organized for the filmmaker and attorney of record to join for a Q&A. She tackled the post-conviction relief filing that would directly impact her client's immigration status, and she even volunteered to stay on well past the end of the semester to represent that client at her next hearing in immigration court. If you want something done, just ask this year's Benitez Award winner to do it. Le echa ganas, as we say in Spanish. She gives it her all. The winner of the 2024 Manuel and Ana Maria Benitez Award for Clinical Excellence in Immigration Law is Gabriela Soto Cotto. I will now pass over the presentation to Lori Cohn, Jacob Burns Foundation Associate Dean for Clinical Affairs, Associate Professor of Clinical Law, Director of Family Justice Litigation Clinic, and Director of Civil Access to, to Justice Clinic. Dean Cohn. Uh, the next clinical award, the Volunteer Services Award, is presented to a member of the Juris Doctor class who excelled in volunteering his or her time and energy to promote the goals and ideals of the law of law of public interest by contributing to the efforts of the Jacob Burns Community Legal Clinics. This year's recipient performed to the highest level of practice in his clinic. 
He excelled in client services, legal drafting, and legal analysis. The clinic director dubbed the recipient's legal research writing skills as top notch, and this particular director does not give that, uh, that compliment freely. Efficiently, but thoroughly, the awardee consistently researched the legal and factual issues embedded in his cases in a manner that impressed his supervisors and exceeded expectations. He explored lines of research that his supervisor admitted he had not even thought of himself, and he memorialized his work in beautifully written memoranda. As impressive, the recipient drew from his knowledge of constitutional and administrative law to develop analogies and lines of arguments in his FOIA cases. In addition, the recipient was fearless in his communications with opposing counsel and enormously poised in his collaboration with his clients. The recipient diligently prepared for every one of his many client meetings, articulately conveyed his research and his recommendations, and always incorporated the needs of his clients in his work. Please join me in congratulating Charles Brandt. Our next award is sponsored by the Clinical Legal Education Association to honor a student or a team of students who, in the judgment of the faculty, has excelled above others in a clinical course. This year's CLIA Award goes, for the first time in my memory, to an outstanding student team of three students. This team put in 100% of their casework over the entire year in the Access to Justice Family and Education Law Division. Despite enrolling in the clinic for a very limited time commitment, as is the nature of this particular clinic, the students found themselves so galvanized by the injustice of their client's case and by the cause of access to justice generally that they collectively dedicated over 800 pro bono hours to fighting their client's case against the DC government in an education matter. Together, they mastered the underlying local and federal law and developed novel legal arguments, prepared to litigate in a forum new to them and admittedly to their supervisor. And during the course of the year, the team beautifully navigated judicially moderated mediations and informal negotiations and settlement talks. They investigated complex facts and interviewed witnesses and prepared a wide range of corroborative and adverse witnesses for trial. And they drafted a powerful motion for discovery, an impressively argued motion for summary judgment that advanced their creative statutory interpretation, their legal interpretation, and their public policy arguments. Although the case settled right before opening statements, this team had prepared a powerful case on behalf of their client and clearly outflanked the opposing counsel in professionalism and preparation. And throughout it all, the team stayed focused on client-centered lawyering, empathy, and justice for their client. Please join me and their other supervisor, Dean David Johnson, in congratulating Alexandra Della Volpe, Augusta Nau, and Ethan Seister. I will now pass the presentation over to Professor Lula Hagos, Associate Professor of Clinical Law and the Director of the Criminal Defense and Justice Clinic. Good afternoon. The Richard C. Lewis Award is presented to the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who exhibited extraordinary dedication to his or her work 
in the legal clinics and unusual compassion and humanity towards clients and colleagues. This year's recipient embodies the qualities and spirit of the Richard C. Lewis Award. Throughout his time in the Criminal Defense and Justice Clinic, the recipient demonstrated extraordinary dedication to his work and remarkable compassion towards his clients, consistently going above and beyond to support them. In one case, the recipient had a client who suffered from serious mental health issues and substance abuse issues. Alongside his stellar clinic partner, the recipient worked tirelessly over many months to address and support her needs holistically, visiting the client at home, driving her to court, and even accompanying her to her grandfather's funeral to ensure that she could attend. The awardee was never deterred from navigating the frustrating and tragic circumstances his clients faced. He went to great lengths to learn about their lives in order to provide first-rate, culturally competent representation. The awardee's commitment and compassion also extended to his support of his peers. One colleague, referring to the recipient's consistent willingness to assist other teams with field investigation and trial preparation, called him the clinic MVP. Please join me in congratulating Stefan Marsh. Welcome, Alfreda Robinson, Associate Dean for Trial Advocacy, Professorial Lecturer in Law, and Co-Director of the Litigation and Dispute Resolution Program to present our first award for Distinguished Accomplishment. Good afternoon. The Justice Thurgood Marshall Civil Liberties Award is presented to the graduating Juris Doctor or Master of Law student who has exhibited outstanding performance in and dedication to the field of civil rights and civil liberties. This year there are three winners who will be recognized individually. The first winner is earning his LLM in litigation and dispute resolution. He is an extraordinarily gifted, passionate immigration attorney. He now serves as the managing partner of his firm with both domestic and international clients. Notwithstanding the well-known challenges of the U.S. Immigration Court, he has succeeded against all odds to provide outstanding, outstanding lawyering alone and with a Texas professor of law on a very difficult immigration case also exhibiting a positive attitude at all times. He has never given up on a client or expressed feeling overwhelmed by the enormous pressures of law school and real world litigation deadlines. In June, he will return to Michigan to continue his immigration law practice, including representation in international cases. Please congratulate Hassam Nasir El Zuri. The second winner has been laser focused on gaining critical on the ground skills and experiences that will serve her well as a public defender. She has been described by faculty as a superstar and is poised to make many significant impacts to society and all of which will benefit the most disadvantaged members of our society. 
She was an intern at the Virginia Indigenous Defense Commission within the Arlington Office of the Public Defender, as well as with the Fairfax Office of the Public Defender. This year, she worked in the Criminal Defense and Justice Clinic, where she represented indigent individuals facing misdemeanor charges in Superior Court of the District of Columbia. Starting in August, she will be joining the Virginia Indigenous Defense Commission Fredericksburg Office of the Public Defender as an Assistant Public Defender. Please congratulate Bella Ox. Our third winner served as a student attorney in the Health Equity Policy and Advocacy Clinic during the fall of 2023, that semester, where she successfully represented an elderly disabled woman in an appeal of, he successfully, I'm sorry, represented an elderly disabled woman in an appeal of a housing choice voucher program terminated on the basis of the Americans with Disabilities Act and Fair Housing Act violations. To represent the client, the student attorney culled through hundreds of pages of evidence to understand the housing authority's historic treatment of the client. He also conducted extensive legal research and analysis to craft both a defense to the determination and affirmative claims against the housing authority for discriminatory, discriminatory treatment. The student attorney successfully preserved the client's housing choice voucher. Within five minutes of submitting his brief, the housing authority general counsel's office rescinded the termination. His faculty advisor said he is a truly exceptional student completely committed to carrying out the ideals of this John, uh, of this award throughout what I am certain will be a highly successful and health justice oriented career. Five minutes, that's fast. Please congratulate Jose Miel Rodriguez. I now welcome Elizabeth Ewart, Senior Associate Dean for Administrative Affairs, John S. Jenkins, Family Professorial Lecturer in Law and Policy Chair. The Michael Dillon Cooley Memorial Award is presented to the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has most successfully maintained his or her compassion, vitality, and humanity during law school. This, is, this award is particularly meaningful and highly coveted because the recipient is selected by a vote of the graduating class. Please congratulate the recipient of the Michael Dillon Cooley Award, Phoebe Fisher. The National Association of Women Lawyers Award is presented to a student who contributes to the advancement of women in society, promotes issues and concerns of women in the legal profession, 
exhibits motivation, tenacity, and enthusiasm, demonstrates academic achievement, and who has earned the respect of the law school faculty and administration. Our winner today embodies all of these attributes. Her nominator said this about her. She is a strong role model for women law students and has opened the minds and eyes of fellow students regarding career opportunities for women attorneys in the armed forces and federal government and working in national security and cybersecurity. She has uncompromising character and integrity. Please join us in congratulating Kendall Stanley. I now, hand over, I now hand over the presentation to Judge Greg Maggs. The next award is the Robert E. Tebow and Richard B. Skank Award for Service to the Military. The Robert E. Tebow and Richard B. Skank Award for Service to the Military recognizes one or more members of the graduating class who have undertaken extraordinary efforts to honor, assist, or otherwise support veterans and current members of the United States Armed Forces and who possess the personal qualities that reflect the qualities of Robert Tebow and Richard Skank, both of whom are military veterans including honor, integrity, leadership, self-sacrifice, self-service, selfless service, and courage. Part of this award is that the recipient receives a flag that has been flown over the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces with an accompanying certificate. This year, there are two recipients. First recipient of the Robert E. Tebow and Richard B. Skank Award for service to the military. Uh, I'm sorry, there are two uh, recipients. Uh, these two students worked as a team, each leading a student group that served veterans in the military. They organized career panels, scholarly discussions, pro bono projects, a military appellate court outreach argument, hosted a talk with the Air Force Deputy <coughs> Judge Advocate General for Women's History Month, and many other worthy events. They worked with law school professors and staff and other student groups, helping to promote services to active duty military reservists and veterans. They also kept veterans apprised of scholarship benefits and career opportunities. I might add that each of them will be commissioned into the U.S. Army Judge Advocate General Corps upon graduation. The first recipient of this award has been involved in promoting service to the military and veterans and has been the face to the National Security Law Program welcoming veterans and military members of the law school. She is currently a captain in the U.S. Army Military Police Corps and she received her JD as an Army funded legal education recipient. While at GW, she served as both the National Security Law Association president and the president of the Veteran Law Students Association. She led by example and mentored numerous military and veteran students and administered a scholarship program for veteran students. The first recipient of the Robert E. Tebow and Richard B. Skank Award for service to the military is Kendall Stanley. The second recipient of this award has been involved in promoting service to the military and veterans throughout his time at GW Law. As the Military Law Society president, he actively led and advertised numerous events, including hosting leaders from the military and defense community, as well as providing outreach and networking opportunities. He has mentored numerous students, assisting them to secure externships with the Service JAG Corps and helping them with their JAG applications. The second recipient of the Robert E. Tebow and Richard B. Skank Award for Service to the Military is Grady Stevens. The next award is the Judge Robert W. Titus Award. The Judge Robert 
W. Titus Award is awarded to a graduating student who seeks or obtains a federal district court clerkship and who embodies the qualities of academic excellence, personality, and humility that Judge Titus sought in his law clerks. I might depart from the script for a moment to say that Judge Titus was a U.S. District Judge in Maryland and uh, he, he passed away unfortunately in 2019, but during his time on the bench he hired more than a dozen GW Law School graduates as his clerks. He told the clerkship committee, I can't help it, I have to just keep hiring GW graduates. He was a Georgetown Law School graduate. <laughs> this year's recipient exemplifies all these qualities. She is an outstanding student and served as the editor-in-chief of the GW Law Review. She has demonstrated a commitment to helping others through her work as a student tutor in civil procedure, torts, and white-collar crime. In 2025, she will clerk for Chief Judge Shelby on the U.S. Court of the District, the U.S. District Court for the District of Utah. The winner of the Judge Roger W. Titus Award is Kendall Archer. The Ladakis and Weston George Washington Law Review Best Note Stipend is named in honor of Howard J. Rudge's GW Law Professors Gus A. Ladakis and Glenn E. Weston. Each year, one student from the uh, one or more students from the George Washington Law Review is chosen to receive the Ladakis and George and Weston George Washington Law Review Best Note Award, established in 2015, to encourage student scholarship by rewarding the most innovative, creative, and thoughtful student notes. Two winners will be recognized today. The first recipient completed his note a year ago, but is graduating this year. He wrote a piece entitled, Incorporating the Social Cost of Greenhouse Gases into the Federal Procurement Life Cycle. The note was published in Volume 91, Issue 1, in February 2023. His note was selected by members of the Law Review's editorial and senior board because of his clear analysis and practical, innovative proposal to use federal procurement framework, to use the federal procurement procurement framework to mitigate the effects of climate change. Please congratulate Evan Matsuda. Today's second winner wrote a piece entitled, Religious Protection or Religious Privilege, The Threat Religious Claimants Pose to Protecting Health in the HIV Epidemic, and it will be published in Volume 92, Issue 2 of the GW Law Review. Notes are evaluated based on the timeliness of the issue, novelty of the approach and solution, usefulness to the legal practice, and overall quality of the writing. The student's note excelled in all four areas. The issue is very timely and is currently before the Fifth Circuit. The note displayed depth of research and analysis, and propose a nuanced framework for evaluating the issue. Please congratulate Sidney Fay. I now invite Rosa Solorio, Burnett Family Associate Dean and Distinguished Professorial Lecturer in International and Comparative Law and Policy to the podium to, con to continue our awards presentation. Our next award this afternoon, the Talma Weaver Memorial Award, is presented to the foreign graduate student who, in the judgment of the Dean, and the International Graduate Studies Committee contributed most to the intellectual and professional life of the law school, its students, and faculty. It was established by the late Professor David Weaver in honor of his wife, Thelma, who was devoted to our foreign students. This year's recipient has become a leader at our law school and constantly supported all our LLM students to thrive during his time with us. He's intelligent, charismatic, creative, passionate, and generous. He has left a mark on everything he has done at our law school. We are lucky to have him 
as our student this year. We all very much look forward to seeing all he will accomplish in the future, which will be tremendous. This year, the recipient of the Talma Weaver Memorial Award is Fernando Muñoz. the celebration over to Robin Juni, Associate Professor of Fundamentals of Lawyering, to begin the presentation of awards for excellence in a general field of study. Good afternoon. Um, I am pleased to begin this next part of the program, uh, which will recognize students for um, accomplishments in particular fields uh, uh, of study and coursework. Uh, so the first of these this afternoon is the Ogden W. Fields Award, which is given to a member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has demonstrated the highest proficiency in coursework in labor law. Our winner this afternoon is James Dugan. All right, hang, hang tough, hang tough here a moment, James. Uh, hang on. <laughs> so the second award this afternoon is called the Lawrence E. Seibel Memorial Award in Labor and Employment Law, um, which recognizes coursework in the slightly broader area of labor and employment. Uh, our winner this afternoon is James Dugan. <laughs> It's now my privilege to turn the program over to my friend, Anthony Tiberio, Assistant Dean of Students. Our next award today is the Richard L. Teberg Award, and it's presented to a member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who demonstrates the highest overall proficiency in the area of securities law. The winner is Benjamin Bernbach. So Benjamin unfortunately could not be here today, but we will send his award to him. Congratulations, Benjamin. Um, yeah. The next award is the Henry R. Berger Award, and it's presented to the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has demonstrated excellence in the area of tort law. The winning student is Maeve McBride. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite John Whalen, Associate Dean for Intellectual Property Law to the stage to continue our presentation. Thank you. Our next award this afternoon is given to a member of the graduating JD class who exhibits excellence in the area of patent law. It is awarded in memory of Chris Bartok, who tragically passed away while a student at GW Law. It was Chris's great desire to study patent law, and it is now the wish of his family in his memory that his memory lives on in the accomplishments of students highly skilled in this area. The winner is Andrew Sua Law Co.
Next, the Finnegan Prizes are sponsored by the law firm Finnegan Henderson to, in the memory of their founding partner, Mark Finnegan. Finnegan Henderson is a leader in the IP profession and a good friend of GW Law. These prizes are given to the Juris Doctor or LLM student who produces the best publishable article on intellectual property law. We have three winners with us today. Third place goes to the student who wrote the article, quote, saving the human genome from corporate ownership, enforcing a functional uniqueness requirement in gene patents. Please congratulate Thomas Romanchek. Second place goes to the student who wrote the article, quote, Orange Book Transparency Act, a gap-filling legislation for the Hatch-Waxman Act. Please congratulate Wei Zhang. And finally, first place goes to the student who wrote the paper titled, quote, Orphan Drug Exclusivity and Catalyst, a Possible Catalyst for Gaps in the Treatment Within Subpopulations of Rare Diseases. Please congratulate Kelsey and Kirk. I also note the coincidence that all three papers happen to be written about the intersections of patents and drug or medical uh, technology. Finally, the final IP prize is the Peter Rosenberg Prize in Panel in the Intellectual Property Law. Um, it, it goes to the, it's the highest intellectual property award and is presented to the member of the graduating JD class who has demonstrated the highest overall excellence in intellectual property law. The winning student today received A range grades in several IP courses, including copyright law, trademark law, the Federal Circuit, patent enforcement, and information privacy law. Our winner is Mariella Warabuff. It's now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Randall Abate, Assistant Dean for Environmental Law Studies to the stage for the next two awards. Good afternoon. Be presenting two awards. The first is the Charles and Catherine Miller Environmental Law Award. The Charles and Catherine Miller Environmental Law Award is presented to the member of the graduating class who has demonstrated excellence in the field of environmental law. The award is named in honor of Dean Lee Paddock's grandparents, who lived on a centennial farm in Lake Michigan and is the place where he first developed his interest in the field of environmental law. And we're very fortunate to to have Dean Paddock continue to teach in our environmental law program as a distinguished uh, professorial lecturer in law. Today's winner has had four papers, that's correct, four, uh, 
on environmental law topics published or accepted for publication as a student. I, I can attest that in my 30 years as a law professor, most of my colleagues were not producing four published <laughs> works in two years. I just wanted to underscore this level of achievement. Uh, with her partner, she was a finalist in the North American regional rounds of the Stetson International Environmental Moot Court competition and won the third best brief in the international final rounds of that competition, which featured uh, more than 30 schools from around the world. She's also an associate editor of the GW Journal of Energy and Environmental Law and interned with the White House Council on Environmental Quality and the Wilderness Society. Uh, this candidate certainly has a very bright future in environmental law, and the environmental and energy law faculty has selected this year's winner as Ashini Choksi. <laughs> theme of bright futures in the field of environmental law. The next prize is the Jamie Grodsky Prize for Environmental Law Scholarship. Each spring, GW Law presents the Jamie Grodsky Prize for Environmental Law Scholarship for the best paper written by a JD, LLM, or L uh, SJD student in the field of environmental law. The prize commemorates the innovative research of Professor Jamie Grodsky, who passed in 2010 and is profoundly missed. The prize is funded by a generous gift from Professor Grodsky's father, Dr. Gerald Grodsky, and memorial gifts from friends on the faculty. This year, the winner impressed the environmental and energy law faculty with his paper titled, From a Shield to a Sword, Using the Dormant Commerce Clause to Challenge State Laws Promoting Fossil Fuels, in which he argues that the Dormant Commerce Clause should be reconfigured in light of emerging principles and precedent to challenge state laws that promote fossil fuels. I would be remiss if I didn't note that this year's winner also is a very talented singer, dancer, and music video producer, as I learned at the GW Law Review Talent Show. Uh, please join me in uh, congratulating this year's Grazi Prize winner, James Crisofoli. It's now my pleasure to introduce Erica Pont, Associate Director and Associate Professor of Fundamentals of Learning Program for the presentation of the next two awards. Good afternoon. I'm presenting two awards. Uh, the next award this afternoon is the Phi Delta Phi Award, which is presented to a member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has demonstrated excellence in the areas of professional responsibility and jurisprudential studies. This year's winner is Drew Weisberg. And our next award this afternoon is the Joel B. Rosenthal Award, which is presented to a member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has demonstrated excellence in the area of commercial law. And our winner today is Kai Key. To present the next award, I'm delighted to turn the podium over to my esteemed colleague, Dean Alan Morrison, Learner Family Associate Dean for Public Interest and Public Service Law and professor Professorial Lecturer in Law.
This is the Howard J. Rudge Creative Solutions Prize. Uh, Mr. Rudge, a member of the class of 1964 and a retired senior vice president of DuPont Corporation, has endowed this, endowed this award for presentation to members of the graduating Juris Doctor class who write the best papers proposing a creative solution to a serious societal problem in the United States. This is not a standard law review treatment of a case or area of law. Rather, the students focus on a particular problem for which conventional solutions do not seem to be working and propose an alternative that is effective, reasonable in cost, and politically possible. Nine students made submissions this year. The second place winner wrote an essay entitled, What About a Reasonable Black Child?, which recognized the special needs of young blacks who are caught in the criminal justice system. The winner and congratulations goes to Kendall Parker. I believe that's about the third Kendall who's won an award this uh, Maybe you should change your name of your children to Kendall to come to GW Law School and get the, get the award. Uh, the first place winner wrote an essay titled, Rebuilding Societal Cohesion Through a Universal uh, National Public Service Program, which took a general concept and translated it into a workable plan going forward. Congratulations, Adrian Ulrich. Now please welcome Jessica Tilletman, Assistant Dean for Government Procurement Law Studies, Government Contracts Advisory Council, Professorial Lecturer in Government Contracts Law, Practice and Policy to present the next award. Okay. Patricia A. Tobin Award is given to a member of the graduating Juris Doctor or Master of Laws class who demonstrates excellence in the area of government procurement law. I should also note that I am particularly proud of this year's awardee who I've not only worked with since he was a 1-0, I've had him in class and I worked incredibly closely with him as he served as the president of our Government Contract Student Association. We are honored to have this student represent our program as he joins the Government Procurement Bar. This year's winner of the Tobin Award is Ethan Seister. Good afternoon. My name is Renee Devine and I serve as the Dean for Academic Development. It is my honor to announce the next two awards this afternoon. Our next award, the Jenny Hassler Walburn Award, is presented to the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has demonstrated the highest level of excellence in the area of civil procedure. Please congratulate Nathaniel Schwamm as our winner today. And the last of our awards this afternoon in this category is the Imogen Wilford Constitutional Law Award. This award is given to a member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who demonstrates excellence in the area of constitutional law. Our winner this afternoon is Avery Renham.
I am now pleased to introduce to you David Johnson, Assistant Dean for Advocacy Programs and Professional Lecturer in Law to continue our awards presentation. Dean Johnson. Good afternoon and congratulations to everyone on graduating. The first award that I'm going to present today is the Jacob Burns Award. The Jacob Burns Award is presented to the winners of the Van Vleck Moot Court Competition. Uh, the Van Vleck Moot Court Competition is a fake argument to the Supreme Court. Uh, and as evidence of the prestige of this competition, six current members of the Supreme Court have presided over the final round. And thanks to Dean Cohen, uh, we're going to add a seventh this coming January. Justice Jackson will be joining us then. So winning this competition is clearly a honor. And uh, we're going to present two teams because uh, one team won it as a 2Ls and another team won it as 3Ls. Uh, our 2L team that has waited a mere year and a half for this award uh, is Lauren Arquette and Anastasia Foley. <laughs> After winning the competition, uh, uh, they went on to lead the Moot Court Board. Lauren was elected president of the Moot Court Board and Anastasia the membership director. Yeah. Lauren also deserves a special award for his president having to work with me for the past year. But that award doesn't exist yet. Uh, and then the 2023-2024 winners as 3Ls, Simon Posner and Angela Seeger. The next award is the Cohen and Cohen Mock Trial Award. Uh, this uh, award and competition is generously endowed by the law firm of Cohen and Cohen. They're a civil litigation uh, a firm here in town. Um, and in this competition, uh, you're doing exactly what uh, you see lawyers do in movies. You're giving opening statements, closing statements, direct examinations, cross examinations. You're putting on a show. And again, uh, we have uh, winners uh, from both their 2L year and their 3L year. Uh, the winners from their 2L year. Uh, the 2022 champions are Stephanie Kamai and uh, Simon uh, Patmore Zacconi. And the 2023 competition champions are Kyle Coopersmith and James Duggan. The next award is the Judge Albert H. Grenadier Award. Judge uh, Grenadier uh, looked over the landscape of moot court competitions and decided there were two competitions that GW should compete in every year off campus. They're the National Moot Court Competition, which is uh, one of the largest competitions domestically, and also the Jessup Competition, which is one of the largest international moot court competitions in the world. And simply for representing, being selected to represent GW in these two competitions, 
competitions. Judge Grenadier uh, wants to honor them with this award. First, we'll recognize uh, the students who represented GW in the, at the National Moot Court competition for 2022-2023. Uh, those students are Hannah Burdett and Isabel Schwartzy. Isabel could not be here today, but come on down, Hannah. And representing GW at the National Moot Court Competition for the 2023-2024 year are Evelyn Perea and Emily Sipes. And now turning to the Jessup International Law Moot Court competition, Judge Grenadier wants to acknowledge the team of Angela Gaska, Alexander Goodrich, Payal Majumdar, and James Bandry. Come on down. And I wanted to note that this team won a ninth best memorial uh, in the competition. A memorial is a brief in the world of international law. The next award is the Pamela Spinogel uh, International Commercial Arbitration Award. Uh, this award was generously endowed by my friend and former colleague, uh, Professor Andy Spinogel. It's presented to the GW team that represents GW in the only international competition we go to. These students traveled to Hong Kong this past semester and represented GW in an international commercial arbitration competition. Um, the coaches for this competition are a collection of lawyers from Covington and Burling. They went weekly for the past school year uh, to the law offices of Covington Burling, where they were trained by attorneys who simply told me, we don't know how to teach, but we do know how to treat them like associates, and we're going to make them work. Um, and so uh, let's, let's, let's bring down the team of Emily Bernhard, Alexa Kutz, Devin Lewis, and Rachel Lloyd. And the final advocacy award, the Rothwell Fig Ernst & Manbeck Award, is presented to the students uh, who won the on-campus Rothwell uh, Fig uh, Intellectual Property Moot Court Competition. And again, we have two teams, a team that won it as 2Ls uh, and then a team that won it as 3Ls. The 2L team, uh, which won the 2023 competition, are Emmanuel Elijah and Charlie Schmidt.
And the final advocacy uh, award uh, is presented to the 2024 winners of the Rothwell competition. Uh, this was actually a team of a 3L and a 2L, so the 2L will have to wait a year and a half for his award, but the 3L smartly um, is ready to go. Elisona Kadriu, come on down. It is now my pleasure to introduce Carmia Caesar, our Associate Dean for Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, to present to begin the presentation of awards for excellence in a general field of study. Good afternoon. The Kappa Beta Pi Awards are presented to the women in the full-time and part-time divisions who attain the highest cumulative averages in the first year of legal study. In the day division, our winner is Maeve McBride. In the evening division, the student with the highest GPA in the first year of law school is Melissa Doro. <laughs> the Phi Delta Delta Award is presented to the female student who attained the single highest cumulative average in the first semester with a 4.18 GPA, I don't know how you do that, in the first semester of law school, the winning student is Maeve McBride. The next two awards are endowed in the name of John Ordreneau, both recognizing exceptional performance during a single year of law school. The first Ordreneau Award recognizes the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who attained the highest cumulative average in the first year full-time course of study. The second Ordreneau Award recognizes the highest cumulative average in the second year full-time course of study. This year, the same person has won both. Please congratulate our winner, James Crucifully. And my apologies to James, it's Chris Afoli, and my mother-in-law, Leona Ruggiero, is somewhere yelling at me. <laughs> I am now pleased to welcome back to the podium Dean Dana Bowen Matthew to finish our presentation of awards today. Next, the Charles Glover Award is presented to the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who attained the highest cumulative average in the third year full-time course of study. With a GPA in the third year of 4.18, this year's Charles Glover Award winner is Nathaniel Schwamm. our final award winners this afternoon is the Willard Waddington Gatchel Award. This recognizes the three members of the graduating Juris Doctor class who have attained the highest cumulative averages 
over their entire law school careers. It goes without saying that the recipients of this award have worked very hard in each course, in each semester, and each year of law school. Also goes without saying that they got little sleep. It is my pleasure to announce the winners in no particular order of rank. James Crisofoli, Nathaniel Schwamm, and Avery Ranham. And now, the Ann Wells Branscombe Award is presented to the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who has attained the highest cumulative average in the part-time division for the entire course of study of the degree. It could otherwise be called the Excellence in Time Management Award as the recipient excelled above all classmates in juggling the rigors of the curriculum while working and attending law school in the evening. I can tell you that of all the deans and all the faculty accord the highest respect to students in the part-time program and most certainly to the Branscombe Award recipient. Today's winner is Melissa Duro. Our final presentation of the afternoon is the John Bell Larner Award. It's given to the member of the graduating Juris Doctor class who attained the highest cumulative average in the entire course for the degree. This, of course, is the award that designates the students with the highest distinction for overall academic excellence in the graduating class. This is our last award that we calculate after all grades are recorded and it represents an extraordinary effort. We are very proud today to honor the student who has earned the highest overall GPA in the 2024 graduating class with a 4.15 GPA, James Crisofulli. So this concludes uh, our academic award ceremony. I'd like to remind you uh, that the digital on the program, like the one that you all have, uh, in advance of today's celebration, there's a QR code on the back that will send you uh, to a completed web page which has all of your names and acknowledgments there. Um, I also would like a moment to thank the folks who made this happen. Like our office worked really hard and a lot of people worked really hard, but I'd like to thank one person in particular. Um, if you all think that you had a busy day today, um, it, you've noticed all of your awards were given out uh, by Andrew Rellen and you've probably received lots of emails from him. Um, well, I, I will not call him Andrew Rellen. Dr. Rellen uh, actually graduated this morning um, uh, or had his graduation ceremony. Um, so while you all were studying, he was also working uh, in our office supporting you all while working on his dissertation entitled How American Law Students Experience Virtual Classroom Instruction During the COVID-19 Pandemic. And so I would like to acknowledge him for all of his hard work to make this day possible. And so I also want to just uh, some logistics. So you're going to receive a link in your, of your photo of your special moment that you had captured earlier today. And you can order those photos if you wish. Um, and I also told you about the program. And so uh, if you all, if everyone would join me in one more round of applause for our graduates. <laughs> And 
and graduates and colleagues, if you all would join me in a round of applause for all of the people who helped make this happen for you, uh, the folks in the audience. And so we appreciate the families, friends, loved ones. So uh, Dean Matthew is going to lead our, our recessional, followed by the faculty, and then our award winners. And then we hope to see you all at the dean's reception this evening. Thank you, and congratulations again.